Alright, so we got another one. We got another one. We got the game. Your boy, the game. Came, came straight out the gate with the documentary. Um, there's a rumor going around saying that 50 Cent wrote most of the documentary. Uh, do I believe that? Hmm. I don't think he wrote most of it. I think he wrote his his lyrics, but I think there was a team of people that came up with a concept idea, or he just threw up a concept idea and then they just ran with it. Um, I think Fifty has a huge influence on the documentary, so he basically created the game's career, allegedly, as as far as I know. I don't want to throw that out there and have the game being mad at me. Um, so, he came out with the documentary. Documentary, if you watch a game interview, you'll hear him talk about the documentary a lot. And the documentary, if you talk with anybody about the game, you got to know what the documentary is. Um, he sold hella records on this shit, too. I don't think he was as big as 50 Cent, but he definitely did get up there with this one, so. Hate it or love it. West Side. I got a version with Snoop Dogg on it. The How We Do. He even got an Eminem feature. Nate Dogg, Mary J. Blige. And on Born to Rap, he said the Mary J. Blige feature to pay for him. I don't know if it was this one. I think he got another one on the next album. And I do also have a Hater or Love It version with G Unit on it. <laughs> and then it's funny too because um, on this album, I have him saying G Unit, but throughout most of his career, he dissed 50 Cent, the, the person that basically put him on for his whole career. Oh, and then Dreams, too. I had Dreams the fucking R, R, B, bitch, like Maya. I think I've seen a picture of her recently. A friend showed me. Uh, so you got Doctor's Advocate. 50 Cent had nothing to do with this album, and this album was good, too. So... Got uh, well, I am when I am helped him out. Wouldn't get far with Kanye West, Jamie Fox in his heyday, and then he got a he had a feature from Nas too. And One Blood is the most popular song. I mean, I think period, and it's on this album. So this is a very good album. See, I'm just looking at all this. I definitely gotta give me an iPod today. No, I'm gonna get it tomorrow. Um, so he took a break, he fell back a little bit. He got LAX. LAX is still good. Uh, My Life is the song that everybody knows from the game on this one with Lil Wayne. He got features from Raekwon, Ice Cube, Luda, fucking Neo, Common, Keisha Cole, DMX. These are le these are heavy hitters, man. He got he got features he got features from people, you niggas, you new niggas would know nothing about. This is a good album too. Let's go to the next album. Oh, Red. Uh, so he took out he took a break after that. Um, this is when niggas started not liking the game like that. But um, he basically appealed to a wider audience on this one. And I still like this album. The Red album? The Red album's dope. I mean, that's me personally. I'm not I'm not the, the same demographic. That was really, really tough on game. I'm, I'm, I represent a di different demographic, and I do understand that. So, But um, he got features from K-1. 
Kendrick. He still got Dr. Dre with him. Snoop Dogg. He got a Tyler the Creator feature. <laughs> Tyler the Creator. I'm definitely gonna be talking about him later on. He got a Drake feature, and this this is in 2011 when all these artists were fairly new. But he he mixed the legends with the newer rappers. He got Benny Siegel. He got Rick Ross, Jeezy, Big Boy, E40, Lloyd. That's another person I'm gonna be putting y'all up on. Mario, Wale, Chris Brown, and Nelly Furtado. And I added a Lupe Fiasco feature on that. Oh, quick. I, I do got to send a plug to Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco has been creating some amazing music. See, I'm not going to be promoting him, but uh, I do want to send a shout out to him. Or I'm not going to be listening to him like that whenever I do like any type of set or anything. But um, I do want... I do want people to be a little bit more aware of Lupe Fiasco, at least for a little bit longer. Um, so we do got Jesus Peace. And, um, man, what an amazing, beautiful, what an amazing um, album cover he got right here. Uh, this is when he starts working with the new artists. We got Meek, we got Meek Mill, 2 Chainz, Rick Ross, Kanye. Common, J. Cole, King Chip. Nobody knows who King Chip is. Um, he he's with he's with Kit Cudi in his camp. Lil Wayne, Big Sean, Loso, Pusha T, Kendrick Lamar, Tank. Nobody knows who Tank is really. I'm gonna be putting people. Oh, I think people know Tank for um. <laughs> they they twisted his words. He was having an interview with Angela Yee, and they twisted his words. And that um, you're okay if you suck two dicks. Or you're not gay if you suck two dicks. But if you suck more than two dicks, then then you're you're gay. All right? He did clear that up though. So. Uh, Elijah Blake, a writer. Chris Brown, Tyga. Future. This is a okay album. I Jesus. Jesus Peace is an example of somebody putting good beats together and just rapping on those good beats, right? And trying to stick to a concept but can't really grasp it. But it it it, it it's it's a nice attempt. See, this is where Eminem makes a mistake. But I always harp on Eminem. Eminem makes a mistake because he doesn't pick modern beats. He doesn't. He doesn't stick with the groove, and you don't really have to stick with the groove all the time. But you have to be with the groove somewhat. You know, you can't just completely veer off. So we got the documentary too. Um, I didn't like the documentary too like that. It was a good. It's a good album though. I can't deny that this is. This is done. This album is done well. I just personally don't like this. This album is too poppy. It's too pop. I like I like 100. Actually, I like all the songs on here for what it is. It's just the problem is it's just it's it's, it's pop. Compared to a documentary 2.5, I really I, I like this album. I like this side better. Documentary two is for the new game fans or people that are trying to people that are trying to put new people onto game. You make them listen to the documentary too. I'm like oh, I like game. Now people who listen to game early on, you're gonna like the documentary 2.5 better. You got Anderson Pack feature, Schoolboy Q, Nas, Wayne, Scarface, Stacey Barth, Seven, DJ Quick. DJ Quick is fucking a legendary West Coast rapper. And this is actually my favorite song on the album, the one he did with DJ Quick. 
outside E40, little e, e to the e, sun, uh, problem, Thai dollar signs, YG, J305. I forgot to mention this last time because I think uh, E40 did this wrong with J305. J305 is a YG problem. He's known for going to New York to try to get 6 9 He was trying to get at 6 9 for a second. Uh, before 6 9 got locked up. Scheme. Scheme. I think the game signed Scheme, but I don't know what the fuck Scheme did. Or what the fuck Scheme's doing. And then, um, it ends from there. I added Bloody Moon. Bloody Moon is fucking the production. Um, how vulnerable he got on the song. I had to add that song on there. I think it was on from a compilation album. So, uh, the game 1992. 1992 is the year I was born. The most talked about year. When it comes to black culture and hip hop. 1992 is the most talked about year, and I just so happened to be born on that year. So, um, that's an okay album. It's not bad. It's not bad. I don't have much to say about it. Um, it's understandable. He do have a Jason Derulo verse on here. Uh, Baby You. Everything is influenced from 1992 culture. Literally. 92 or 93 or maybe 94. And that's it. Then I added a writer. But that's the stage low. So, oh, now we're at Born to Rap. So, on the coming of this album, it's been waiting a while. So, the game has ran into controversy. He's claiming he's retiring. He said, I'm, I'm done. I'm retiring. Um, God knows why. Uh, I definitely hope he comes back four or five years from now. He does need a break. But um, we definitely do want him to come back. But I think after that, it's going to be just, again, just with, with Snoop Dogg. And just even getting older, just... Let's let's make it a little more broad. Even getting older, with me personally, I'm older. I'm an older person. With how I do things and how I carry myself, it's not how these kids carry themselves nowadays. These kids carry themselves way differently nowadays. I won't understand. I won't understand it. I just I won't get it because I wasn't. I'm not a kid in today's era. I look like a kid, but I'm not a kid in today's era. So my influences are going to be a little different. Me versus me playing Nintendo. Me playing the GameCube. Uh, I'm going to start posting GameCube shit on there. And people aren't going to understand that. Because y'all used to HD graphics. You know, you're used to being able to really see your character versus the, the blur that we had to deal with. Wired controllers, um, older games, older influences. There's things that I represent that you guys just won't understand. Damn. So what was my point? Oh yeah. So I think that's the problem. I think that's. I think it's hard harder for these legendary rappers to keep up and maintain with the newer <laughs> crowd and the newer audience. Uh, it's just harder for them. I think it's going to be harder, it's easier for certain artists, but for other artists, it's harder to keep up with the newest, newer influences. Because now you got Latino rappers in, you got Skrillex coming in, you got more rappers from different races coming in, you got Nav. Nav is like Palestinian, DJ Khaled is Palestinian, I think. I don't want to get that wrong. Um, Eminem is white. Who else is white that, that's relevant? Russ is Italian, he's in. Nicki Minaj is a female rapper that's been, even though I'm not saying female rappers haven't always been in the game, but um, now you got rappers from different cultures coming in and you know taking the taking the spotlight. But um, that was my whole point with 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 that. It it's okay. It's okay to 
age, like me, even me getting an iPod, that's showing my age. Kids don't do iPods anymore. Everybody gets their music on Spotify. That's what everybody does nowadays. But with Spotify, you ha constantly have to be on the internet. The way I get my music, I don't have to constantly be on the internet. And plus, I can rewind my songs, visit old songs, and I have all the songs that I want. You guys won't be able to get every artist that you want. You get most of the artists, and you don't have control of the music. You have to constantly be online. Now, if the online is gone, who are you going to come to? Me. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't have every song as well, but I do have a set type of playlist in, 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 in a way that I that I do things. But anyway, back to game. Um, he actually put uh, Ed Sheeran on it. Uh, but I haven't listened to this album fully. I listened to some of it. I didn't hear the Ed Sheeran. No, I heard I heard the first Ed Sheeran. I didn't hear the last. I, I, I heard I went from one to I want to say 22 me me I listened to it with somebody else um, but he had some interesting features on there you got Ed Sheeran uh, Miguel Dom Kennedy which I'll probably be trying to put back into my playlist Mozzie it's only Ozzy chill uh, Red Cafe that's interesting just live Nipsey Hustle, rest in peace He's supposed to be on my playlist, too. It's weird because a lot of rappers are dying. I'm like, man, Nissy Hustle. And I heard his first album, too. And I thought it was pretty cool, especially on with the, the, dedicate, the dedication with the uh, Kendrick. And I'm like, yo, Nissy Hustle about to go on. He about to be a gatekeeper. He about to start, you know, uh, putting other niggas on. And then he just died. He just died. And I seen a man, it was so horrible. You know, I there's so many rappers dying. Mac Miller, Nipsey Hustle, Juice World. Mac Miller caught me by surprise. Then Nipsey Hustle died. Then Juice World died. Um, XXX Intention. And it's all in the span of a whole year. XXX. Mac Miller, Nipsey, then Juice World. But um, anyway, back to game. Um, we got Marsha Ambrosius. So I'm gonna be looking back into her. Twenty One Savage fe uh, features. I think this puts them up. Hold on, give me one second. Cause he did a song. He had a song I added with him with YG. Yeah, this puts 21 Savage up on a higher. <laughs> it's what puts 21 Savage up. Bryson Tiller, legendary. I think everybody's forgetting about Bryson Tiller, but Bryson Tiller's all about the music. So, Anderson Pack, of course. Breezy, Trey Song. Everybody's working with Chris Brown and Trey Songs. Chris Brown and Trey Songs are the go to R&B guys now. Um, Neo, Neo's way like pop, like up there, like pop. Like he just makes, and Neil Neil got a good album. I'm gonna be covering him later. But um, yeah, this is the game, legendary West Coast rapper. Um, you know, I definitely hope he makes more music. I will be listening to him for the time being, until he becomes he comes out of relevancy. Uh, we definitely fuck with game. And that's about it. Anyway.